How you doing, John? Oh, hi. So, well, first of all, I I thank you for the you know for this opportunity to uh, interview you. Sure. Um. Sure. Okay. So let's just um um start off with this. Um. So where are you originally from? Uh, I'm from Toronto. I'm I'm living in I'm back in Toronto. I moved to New York in March March first, eighty seven, and left three and a half years later on September first. 1990. Okay. My period is 1987 to 1990. Sort of like the uh, the beginnings of the club kids in the tunnel basement with Larry T and Nelson and Merton Paul and Paul Lahomo, the celebrity club, and all the other Michael Allen kind of uh, instigated events. <laughs> but I also was covering uptown and celebrity events and theater events and whatnot. I wasn't just a, a nightlife photographer. Uh, there's too much to off, on offer to just limit yourself in New York, I figured. Oh, oh yes, I, I, yeah, I do agree. So I would like to talk about the Toronto Star. When you were six years old, you uh, d- uh, delivered for them? My sister, my sister had the paper out when she was, if I was six, she would have been 11. And then... The paper route was given to me and my brother and our friend, and we all, all had like seven papers to deliver, right? like after school. <laughs> like mine was around the corner, and you know, we got our little, like it was like a paid allowance, or it was a work, working allowance, I guess. And, but then uh, I ended up taking over for my brother, and then the other friend, and then I bought a paper route. So I was, yeah, I, 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 I did the paper route for like seven, eight years probably. Until wow. I went to high school. Okay, and tell me about your experience in going to a Catholic high school. Catholic high school. Yeah. Um, uh, I was a punk faggot. Yo, know, Simone, you punk faggot. Oh, um, yeah. So that wasn't a pleasant experience. A good Catholic, good mm-hmm. moral Christian Catholic high school in Scarborough, Ontario, okay. uh, Toronto. And, um, cause I don't know, I guess they resented, I had, you know, wore leather, skinny leather ties. I don't know. But mm. see, they were all, I mean, I was going to see Elvis Costello in 1978 and Bruce Springsteen in 78. They didn't even know who they were. Like, the, the, the suburban pukes, I would call them the suburban <laughs> pukes. They, they, uh, the height of cool was super tramp. I mean, the most irritating, progressive rock. Ugh. No. Do, you know, do you even know who Supertramp is? No. Hey. No, John. No, exactly. <laughs> Number one album for a year in 78. If you want to go way back, I know Look Elvis. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Look at that. Breakfast in America. Every song was a hit. And every song was freaking irritating. Oh. Here, let me give you an example. <laughs> Take the, take the long way home. Take the long way home. Oh, God. There's no classic. Anyway, so I was into cool music okay. because cool so, music was better. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So um, the sparkless uh, uh, disco in the CNN Tower. Can you please tell me yeah, a little was, bit more uh, about that? Yeah, that was one of, that was the world's, world's high, tallest, highest discotheque. Mm. It was at about 1,500 feet in the sky, and uh, it didn't didn't revolve. The restaurant still revolved, but it was the highest freestanding structure before Burj Al Khalif in, in Dubai a few years ago mm. from 1977. So it was a, the disco was called Sparkles, and I only, I only worked there for a, a short while because... Um, I got did started doing this because I got the job through a couple of three sisters who had this gig in all the clubs in Toronto, and and then you know the first weekend I sold more than anyone else because I'm engaging and blah 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 and and I was working for them for a few weeks mm. and then yeah. they disappeared. Mm, wow! And I okay. thought 
oh, well, the clubs still know me, and I'll just get my own camera and my own film yeah. and my own folders. Yeah. And so I didn't see Copa, because that was a bit more involved, because it was way up in a tower, right? So, you know, yeah. and it was a bit downtown, where these other clubs are right in Midtown, so like the, the, the Copa Cabana, the Copa, Copa was in you know, Yorkville. The, the Diamond and the Spectrum. And I did the big bop for a bit, but I had to, anyway. So, okay. So I just, they knew me, so I just continued doing it, and and they totally disappeared for like almost a year or so. And why did they disappear? Because yes. the, I saw in the Toronto Star, no less, on page A2, all these mug shots mm. of all these people involved from this Rooney's discotheque on Young Street. It was a big singles hangout, and they sold they sold up there too. But they did that club by themselves, and they also sold roses. And what else were they giving, selling with those roses and photographs? Yeah. Do you think? Mm. Mm-hmm. So they had a little yeah. folder, right? A little, a little folder. Ba- bag folder? A little photo okay. folder, right? Okay. So the folder right okay. there that slips in. There's 20,000 of those folders okay. with my photo, pol- Polaroids in New York City. Stamp, hot mm. shot, instant photo promotions. <laughs> anyway, so they were selling cocaine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And then they were using the profits to try get to print up all these nice lithographed folders with the logo from all the night, different nightclubs. But I just took over, you oh, know, screw okay. them. Because they, they, they did this job also down in Fort Lauderdale. You figured, you know, all the clubs in Fort Lauderdale, blah, blah, blah. So I did this gig for about a year and a half, and then I, I left because I went to New York. So I just, you know, left a good gig in a sense. Okay. It wasn't that lucrative. The Toronto people are cheap. They'll pay eight bucks. This is 1985 and 86, right? Yeah. They would pay eight dollars for one of these fancy, you know, club drinks that last maybe an hour. But they wouldn't pay five bucks to memorialize. <laughs> but you know, New York, yeah. New York, it was, uh, it was crazy. Do you prefer a studio or find subjects in where or where they are? I never worked in a studio until I spent five years on Princess Cruises a few years ago, where I shot hundreds of thousands of studio portraits of passengers and crew and whatnot. No, I was. Uh, mm. I never went. I didn't go to theater school. And I did go to theater school. I didn't go to photography school or journalism school. Uh, so I didn't have that even in my mindset of setting myself up as a studio photographer. Sure. No, not not my not my. And I you know figured that I came from nightlife photography. I just segued and and every so many doors opened for me. You're carrying a camera in a nightclub. In mm. New York, you're accepted. You're you're validated. You're you're wow. you're you're acknowledged. Oh, you have a camera. Oh, and you're doing something. Then you're 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 part of the scene, kind of thing. Uh, and and I worked very hard. Which which gig did uh, did you really like? I know I know there's thousands, hundreds of of things that you that you did, and in the future you, you but but you will do. But is there um, a gig that you really enjoyed? Um, doing gig like what? A photography? Yes, gig yes, yes. Well, I mean, I the ten eighteen. I mean, I did that for almost like a year and a half, twenty months. Okay. I mean, that was just my my bread and butter. I mean, that was. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I I also sold the uh, worked at Studio Fifty Four. It reopened as a juice bar, and the actual owner of the building. Not the Steve Brown didn't own the building. He just was, you know, leasing it, and all the props were still there. All the coke and the spoon and the moon or whatever, um, all the lights and whatnot. But the crowd was, you know, low rent bridge and tunnel. They weren't like the high end bridge and tunnel yeah. with all the whatever. So I worked there for uh, before Halloween '87 to just after New Year's Eve '87. Uh, uh, okay, cool. Because uh, anyway. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, so far, but you you had to, you you told me um, very very interesting uh, interesting stories. But is there um, anything that you you can't tell any on the road or in 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 a club scene that you can tell? C- can you share like anything anything interesting, crazy? Oh, that you, that you... I mean, I mean, I mean, I, if you, if you seem obviously you've been on my website. Yes. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For, three, for, for three years, I, I went out 
and you know, and just photograph the same people if they were named, and they got their photograph taken. I just did since COVID started. Mm-hmm. In March, April, May, I did 8,000 more scans for my archive, and um, I just quickly counted up all the, let's say, La Homa pictures. You know La Homa, right? Yes, yes, I, I adore yeah, her. So, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, 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 so La Homa, I already had maybe 30 or 40 or in my original archive. I got another 60 photos of, of La Homa. So this is how, like, I scanned every single mm-hmm. shot basically of every named person, whether it's a, 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 a greatest shot or not, whatever, just to whatever. Okay. And um, so it wasn't like, like I could never have gotten La Homa to my studio 60 times, so to speak. And then there's 60, well, they're not uh, they're the same pictures, the same outfits, the same night, whatever. But, you know, then you've documented that person for like three years. Their outfits, their wigs. That's what I call why I call my RuPaul show uh, mm-hmm. "Evolution of an Icon," because when I literally put all of the photos I had of her in chronological order, via like the order I knew I like contact sheets were in, it was like she would wear this week for three months, and then she would you'd never see it again. And it was like an evolution, and it got more classier, and what I wrote, uh, I've mentioned more couture, uh, more elegant. See, before 1990. Yes. 1990, 91, when did grunge come out? Uh, 90, early, uh, early, late 90s, early, uh, early, mid, 90s, early 90s, 90s, yeah. Yeah, and that's also when the club kids got sleazy and tacky and, and, gr- and gross and, and messy, messy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, the photos I'm seeing, like, I've got like a thousand, I mean, I, I'm trying, I just, you see all the contact sheets I just shared of people I don't know their names of? Mm-hmm. These people, all stylish, mm-hmm. st- uh, put together. These were, these people who were going to the Suzanne Barsh parties uh, were stylists, designers, millionaires, uh, makeup artists. These people weren't messy, drug addict, club denizens. Mm-hmm. These people had a class and elegance. It was a club couture. Um, so I saw that with the drag queens too. Yes. Uh, uh, there's the messy, you know, pyramid club performances and and characters they yeah. would put out. But the thing about the club kids, the original, what I call class of '87, <laughs> and, the, and the legends of, <laughs> of the drag queen legends, is that they didn't. You knew who they were when you saw them again, mm-hmm. but it was a totally different look okay. or a totally different character. Yeah. Uh, like you saw my photos, a good example, the best example, since uh, Sister Dimension, uh, Suzanne Barsh's uh, drag DJ and great promoter. Yes, it's like, yes. you know, alien looks and third, like the third, uh, third eyes. It's like, uh, uh, she might do elements of the look again with the third eye thing. So let's um yeah let's let's fast forward. Yes, okay. you 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 left you left on Toronto for New York. So did you find what what you were searching for, and, and that is glitz and glamour. Well, glitz and glamour. Yeah. Well, I was originally going to continue theater, you know, work. You know, I did a lot a bunch of classes and workshops and. Yeah one-on-ones with Louise Lasser, no less, from Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman fame. But uh, then I realized I am part of a theater. Nightlife is a theater. It's a stage. Uh, so, who of needed, so that dream, I mean, I, I, and also it was, hard, it was hard work in a sense that you know, you got to go to classes and whatnot. And I just stopped doing it. I just stopped. Uh, when I got my own place in 1988, May 88, because uh, Pat Richard went back to L.A., because his whatever, and um, I was like, okay. I, yeah. Even from 87, I said, okay, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I was learning how to be a photographer because I wasn't, a, I wasn't like, I was, you know, I was like, like I was, Never a real photographer. You pay your I dues. Be, decided to become one. Yeah, until but I you, to become one. you work hard. Yeah, you work. You yeah. work hard at it, and you pay your dues. Yeah, um, uh, but see, I was lucky because with the Polaroid gig, yeah, I uh, all that. I guess all that money I basically invested in 
three years of film and developing and taxi cabs. You can't you can't take subways in New York at night. You go to the West Side nightclubs. There are no subways <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Anyway, but um, but then I felt like yeah, I thought I was seeing this. I mean, I guess you read that. You know, like I would read D- Details magazine before I went to New York, and that was beyond the coolest of the cool. Uh, and I, and then I end up you know being discovered by Stephen Sabin, the columnist for Details. Yeah. Uh, and not that anybody really gave me much respect because I was this p- sort of pushy, uh, gregarious, but, you know, a lot of a, a, a bolt of energy. And, you know, a lot of these New Yorkers are so cool and, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't re- show that you're working hard or you're um, striving. You know, if you're striving, yeah. then you're, you know, you should be. Uh, what is a house photographer? The house, uh, uh, house photographer. Yeah, for, for, yeah, photographer. Well, see, well, I mean, I was being working at ten eighteen. I mean, I also had my thirty five millimeter camera. So when Eddie, the night Eddie Murphy and Mike Tyson showed up, I mean, Gene Danino, the owner, you know, made sure I got photos of him, and that photo went into details. And what? Mike Tyson would be, would pose with all the girls for their five six dollar Polaroids. Yeah, and and other times when uh, John Travolta showed up and Gene needed a photo, but I didn't. Ironically, I was because it was my bread and butter. I was focused on selling on the Wednesday, Friday, Saturday when I was at Ten Eighteen. When it was happening on Wednesdays every week for uh, twenty months, the best <laughs> Latin hip hop. Uh-huh. New kids on the ta- uh, new kids, but whatever, whatever on the block. New, new, new kids on the block. All performing. Yeah. Wow. All performing. Okay. But yeah. I barely took any photos because that would have interrupted <laughs> yeah. my my business. Oh. I would have to wow. okay. uh, grab the other camera, or maybe put the other camera away, and 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 then you're 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 one thousand people to deal with, and, and you know I, it mm. wasn't my bag. It wasn't mm. like, it wasn't a priority when mm. I could have photographed all of these young and upcoming acts at the time. But today, uh, uh, you know, you can't do everything. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, so when I say house photographer, I could have been doing that. Okay. But see, they, they weren't paying me yes. to be there. Um, I was paying Gene Benito to be there. Okay. I gave him wow. a kickback every week. Mm. Um, uh, easily, I gave him his pocket money. I, mm-hmm. I gave him average 150, 200 bucks a week for 20 months. You figure it out. <laughs> so, um, is there, but there's no club that is still open into this day. Like, like the 1018, but the Roxy is obviously closed, right? Yeah. Like, all, yeah, all, all the clubs back then, like the bridge, like the tunnel is is obviously closed. Um, yeah, they're all condo. They're all big towers now. Ten eighteen's a big tower. I think then the tunnel is maybe developed into a tower too, or it's offices. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Have you have you gone back there to see how how it looks now? Uh, well, I was I had a, uh, had my work in the Nelson Sullivan yeah. show last year. Yeah, so, which we we're um, gonna talk about, but, but talk about I, that. So, oh, oh, but also in in May. I was in New York. Well, I was staying in the Poconos, mm. but I presented this photo video at the IFC Center, the Independent Film Channel Center down in the village on Sixth Avenue, um, of, of international crises and Queens of New York. Just like a photo slideshow as opening uh, uh, in the program of a of, her, of, of a documentary on international crises. Mm. Uh, uh, that's um, a big long story, also. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I was uh, so I went. My friend Jeanette, who I stayed with in the Poconos, yeah. we came into the city the once or twice and whatever. So yeah, we're going up in the West Side Highway. So I could see where Ten Eighteen was. I don't remember seeing the, where the tunnel was and if it's that building still there. But um, I mean, it's and it's good and bad, I guess. I mean, it, okay. it looks a lot prettier and cleaner. But now that uh, there's no reason to be in New York. Or <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Become, uh, maybe back re- resort uh, revert back to the real New Yorkers. 
Yeah. Um, so, okay. So between um, October, um, you know, but the year between 1987 and January 1988, um, you moonlighted at the reopen on Studio 54 and you sold more than 800 photos. Um, can you t tell me more th about that about that experience? About uh, New Year's Eve? Yes, yes, yes. Is uh, exactly New Year's Halloween. Eve, I sold uh, New Year's Eve. Well, together, I on those two nights I sold eight hundred, uh, three hundred on the Halloween, which freaked me right out because I was there to make money, honey. And um, and um, of course. And then on New Year's Eve, I sold five hundred. So basically, like mm -hmm. fifteen hundred profit, twenty five hundred profit. And that's just after paying my kickbacks. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But it's like uh, whatever. Everybody's in, in it for a buck. And what the, you know, I said when I, I met, uh, introduced myself to Gina at this club. I remember in the big tall high house stairwell, big entranceway. It was doing for me. <laughs> that's in it for me. Exactly. Okay. You know, okay. he's making probably hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of dollars a week and, 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 and liquor sales, but he still wants to cut a little guy's act. That's just fair, I guess. Okay, so you, you, tra <laughs> you, you, you transitioned in career-wise as a uh, photojournalist um, at the well, Details I, magazine? It, 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 what, Details magazine? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I, I didn't do much writing. I did s some columns for Project X, Michael Alex magazine. Okay. Uh, I did a celebrity sheet so I could just, you know, talk, uh, you know, silly idea things about the, some celebrities, I had, photos I had, whatever. I did John Simone's Stardom and Court Magazine, yeah. uh, Kingdom, Fassendom, Michael Tron, and club dumb michael alec i did his photos but then i did a uh stardom column with my celebrity photos and, and a couple of other things but when i went back to toronto uh i did a column for this uh new um uh, uh, alternative weekly my weekly i was there i was the i was there guy and then another and then a gay magazine called uh, icon and then mm -hmm. extra magazine uh which was the biggest publisher in canada of gay and lesbian uh, publications, I was Johnny Paparazzo for nine and a half years. <laughs> so that's yeah. when I had a name. They named me, yeah, yeah. But uh, so I was documenting Toronto from uh, the from the clubs to the art galleries, okay. to theater, to society, to the Toronto Film Festival, the Gay Film Festival, whatever. The Toronto, I mean, it's Toronto. It's like you know, yeah. it's as, as, as more as active as New York. Yeah, it sounded well. It sounded like fun, though. That in, in yeah, it was time. my social life. It, like uh, I would never have to pay to go see anything. So that that's great. That that's great. Kind of free. Yeah. We but we all love free say, oh, stuff. Well, why aren't you paying a cover? I said, well, I, I, you want me to pay to do my job? Job? So yeah, I work. I can, no. I can do that in New York. But <laughs> 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 you know, but no, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I mean, a couple of uh, times that I got upset me in New York. It's in these doormats. It's a it's a fundraiser. Oh Lord. I said, I don't give a, I don't give a fuck. How many times you know? I heard that? <laughs> Frankly, because do you want people to know about your fundraiser, or do you want no one to know about your fundraiser? I don't. Because I didn't understand. I never understand yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah of uh, promotion yeah. is good. Um, um, promotion is good. Yeah, and, and those are the kind of doormen that don't get their photo taken anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> you, uh, you, you, okay, so you bought um, two um, um, cameras. Um, do you, do you, uh, do you remember which, um, I, I've, yeah, obviously, my Minota, Minota, my Minota Maxim 7000, <laughs> okay. that's how I did all my work, I did all the work you see on those two cameras. Okay, uh, um, how much, how much, if, if, if your mom asking, um, um, I'm back then, how much, um, uh, uh, would, a uh, day, a day cost to buy those so kind I, of things? I remember, I think $500 each. But I may have gotten one for a bit less because I bought it from another uh, customer through my camera store. Uh, okay. It was basically brand new. I think I was with a bell. Like I got, I bought one and then I bought the, another one, which I never really did as much because I was doing color with the second camera. Very few people published color, so I very mm. I, I don't have as 
have about three times as, as at least three or four times yeah. as many black and white in color. And and yeah, I mean, do, do you <laughs> prefer black and white or in in color? Well, when you look at the work now, again, I wasn't a, you know, like, uh, I didn't go to photography school, so I didn't have preconceived uh, 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 awareness or uh, knowledge of, of even what I was, uh, of, like, anyway, whatever. But when I look at the work now, it looks it's great. Like the black and white yeah. is, 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 is timeless, mm-hmm. uh, and you can see the composition. You see the framing. If 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 I had a chance to in the in, you know if it's in a club interior with strong lines, you know, in the wall or the or whatever framing devices, which I didn't even realize maybe at the time. Maybe I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. But it's nice to see that you know when I look at these pictures now. Like I'm, I've been scanning pictures. Obviously, these eight thousand scans. I'd never uh-huh. scanned them before. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is. Um, um, so what am I saying? Huh? Less, um, no, it's, it's fine. You're doing, you're doing great. I, I, yeah. um, St- uh, Stefan, uh, S- uh, S- uh, Sabin, if I'm pronouncing his last name um, right, he was a, uh, um, yeah, he was a, Sabin? Uh, Sabin, yes, uh, S- yeah, Stefan, Stephen Sabin. Yeah, oh, Stephen S- Sabin, okay. Um, um, yeah, um, tell me a little bit more about, uh, I'm working with him, I assume. Um, we, well, he was like the uh, considered to be like the great wit of downtown. Uh, he was like uh, our generation's Walter Winchell, who not without you know national. Well, he didn't have a national audience because details went national when Condé Nast bought it, and it was ended up being in probably every newsstand. But uh, because the first thing you would do every month is to buy Details magazine and go straight to. Mm-hmm. Stephen Saban's column, because uh, am I even though it's two uh, months after the fact? Because let's say if I, my photos, I published the, the first photos in November '87, but I took those photos in August. Okay. Filed them in September, and they came out in late October. Yeah, but um, so he was. So if you were in Details Magazine, yes. you had you were acknowledged, you were arrived, and you were, like, in the same page as Andy Warhol and, and you know, Debbie Harry and, and everybody who was already famous and legitimately in New York, legitimately. And then there's, the, you know, the fabulous club people who are legitimate because they're yeah. doing something. They're, they're creating, you know, all the, like, the John Sexes and Joey Ariases and the Ad Man Magnuson, I think is the new Star Trek series. These were the performance artists and the, the legends of downtown, okay. um, legends of New York. Um Okay. What was, the, what, was the, what was the question? What was the question? I don't know that exactly, but you you answer it. How was was, oh, was working with Stephen? Stephen Stephen. Sorry, Stephen Yeah. So, so again, and uh, and uh, I, uh, you know, everybody wanted to be in Stephen Saban's column, but the thing mm-hmm. is, you can't ask him to put just put him in. You have to sort of, you know, yeah, yeah, how to explain. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's something, it's something like, it's like the brass ring, you know, oh, everybody wants to grab it, but not everyone even gets a chance to, because, you know, again, it's only, only so much real estate to fill, and it was a lot of mm. text, but uh, sometimes he probably had 30, 40 pictures in his column, so it was a great, always a great read. And and visually, it, it told you what was happening, like, the pre and just in recent times. Um, oh. Okay. And and he just died recently. He just died a couple of years ago. Oh, I'm so, so sorry to hear that. Yeah, pancreatic cancer, I think. Okay. Um, and uh, and then he did, he did the blog for for World of Wonder for many years before he got too ill, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is the RuPaul company, World of Wonder. Okay. Um, and and I again, I read him. I read him. So when I when I first met him, yes. Um, I met him at the tunnel. And I was still using my dad's old Minolta camera, which I'd brought to New York, like something from the 70s. And, and I met this journalist, Patrick Buckley, and he took me to a party at the tunnel. It was Brooke, it was, uh, Nikki Hass and Nikki Haskell. Could have been Nikki, uh, probably Nikki Haskell, uh, who's a crazy compass now. 
to sell vitamins to celebrities. And, <laughs> and, and it was uh, the Brooklyn Day Parade. And every year, the Brooklyn yeah. Day Parade is the, the parade, the Grand Marshal is a famous Brooklyn night. And that year was Connie Stevens. So uh, it was Connie Stevens, and Tony Bennett was there, and Grace Jones, and I'm photographing Very all cool. of them. And uh, the first time I met uh, Sherry Baroness von Korber hyphen Bernstein. New York's only Jewish American baroness, who was sort of like my surrogate mother, and uh, I think I sent her a photo in the mail, and she sent me a thank you card. We were very, very, very best friends. But then I met Patrick McMullen, the other photographer of downtown that night. I met Michael Musto, and I well, met Stephen Spaven, all at the same party uh, through Patrick Buckley. It's um. But Suzanne Barsh was starting her first Tuesday nights at Savage, okay. at Savage in 2013. Let's discuss about your favorite person. How did you meet um, uh, Michael Alec? Well, <laughs> I vaguely remember he was traipsing around. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm pretty sure. The, the, I, I try to remember when was the first time I met Michael Alec. I'm pretty sure he had, I think he had heard about me. And he came one night, and I and he was traipsing through the upstairs VIP lounge of the 1018, which was like my home, basically, with all the homeboys, mm -hmm. and with Julie Jules, and introducing himself. That's the first time, because then I think that I ended up at the tunnel for a party that James St. James did, a La Dolce Vita party. There was like 10 people showed up, and it was Michael and Julie and me, and I remember taking lots of photos of me and with Michael, and blah, blah, blah. And that was um, the beginning, and it, it must have been that fall or early that, I mean, whatever. I mean, and... Uh, yeah. and I mean, it's just so. I mean, it's hard to chronologically. Put oh it. no! Yeah, uh, I, I do. I do understand. It's 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 been a while yeah. and a long time. Can you tell me um about the Outlaws party and 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 Nathan's Coney Island and and, and Times Square? Across the street. It's across the street. McDonald's. Across the street. So uh, Michael, I thought it was at Burger King. No, it's at McDonald's. Burger King wouldn't let us do it. Oh. So here we are. Um, I love my party at McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah, um, you can see me in the video. You can see me in the Nelson Sullivan video in this long, messy hair and these nerdy glasses and a leather jacket. And, and I'm saying, Nelson, uh, take my picture. Make me famous like a geek. <laughs> That is, yeah, that's true. How Very many, few. How many nights? Well, it was one night, right? I, I think. Well, it's only, it was only one hour, baby. One hour, but, yeah. yeah but, Until uh, the cops came. <laughs> you know, it was, it's ostensibly, there's always uh, sometimes a reason for the party. Like, so it was Frank Rocchio's birthday party. He was one of the owners of the world. Mm -hmm. And he had broken his leg. So I got photos of him. Sitting down at McDonald's with the crowd behind him with, with his, with his, we call it his crutches, and mm -hmm. a couple of photos of Michael and James and, and a group of the, uh, whatever, and nothing else, like a fool. Because I, I, when I became a party promoter in the last year and a half, when the Polaroid business went tits up, um, 
all the, I did was doing all these fun parties with performers and whatnot, but very few photos of it. <laughs> mm. Because when you're hosting the talent contest, it, 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 whatever. Because I was, you know, I, I did all sorts so, of stuff like that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so the um okay from from that from from the uh, McDonald's. So you so you were I I have to I saw the video of 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 Nelson from that um from, from the McDonald's. I had to rewatch it. Um. Yeah, that does. When he comes to, uh, I got coolers, and there's always people looking at me like I've got. I, I say, uh, if you want a drink, it's like a, if you want a drink, you need a glass. If you want a drink, you need a glass. Because I'm here with all this vodka noise. I have no glasses. Mm. So I don't know how I even <laughs> how even people got it. I should have. I should have been. You know, I, I should have like held it, had somebody hold it up, and then yeah. have people put their put their mouths to it like a chug it. Oh, yeah. But I mean, I never went to. I was never a frat boy, so I wouldn't know those kind of things. <laughs> okay, so at this at this time, um, you are you are getting to know uh, Michael Adley, and you are I I think you you begin to work with him on the um, Project X ma- uh, magazine. Well, first, before Project X, okay. And I don't know. This is never really talked about because <clears throat> there was this character. I don't know if her real name was Sheba, uh, but she fancied herself the Queen of Sheba because her 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 boyfriend in L.A. was Solomon. You get it? And he did this famous sort of outlaw party yeah, or pop-up party called <laughs> mm-hmm. the Sandbox, and and she exiles herself to New York, and she. Oh my God! Now it's coming back to me. <laughs> Uh, I hooked up with her, with Julie Jules and Michael Alley, blah, blah, blah. But it was her and I, first, that contributed uh, a column to Dude magazine in L.A. called, it was called Dude, and the column was called the East Village Idiots, I think. <laughs> um, and lots of photos, you know, were Cal Welch and the Club Kids and whatever, whatever. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and she was writing about Feasting the Queen and this, all this crazy shit. So we did the first one. They didn't put my name in it. Like, all, all my photos were anyway, blah, blah, blah. You know, you, you get a... Like, I do your, understand. You know, yeah. your copyrights. Yeah, your yeah, yeah. copyrights. Anyway, so then uh, that changed format and they didn't want to... And they, not that they were paying me, but I only did about maybe two or three issues of that. Maybe three or four. Court, that was Dude Magazine. Yeah, Dude. And then she started a magazine called Court. Get it? Queen of Sheba in her court. So that was, mm-hmm. oh, that was a, oh, that was a, yeah, that's a stardom, clubbed them, fashioned um, Judy Jules is the uh, princess editor, or editor, princess, mm-hmm. and Michael Alley, whatever. And so uh, that's when I did my stardom column. And, okay. And, but I did the photos, so not, not all of them for him. Uh, Lex did some of the photos, the other photographer, Lex, L E X, Boter. Okay. B O T E R F. Um, she sort of disappeared. And um, how long you was doing that for? And then, and then, so yeah. and then we we all fell out with not we all, but it stopped with she buzz. Mm-hmm. I think she was she was like you know she was uh, running off on crazy tangents. And then uh, I don't know who paid for that magazine. Maybe it was Rudolph mm-hmm. from the tunnel. Maybe but it was Rudolph that gave Michael money to start Project Dex. Okay. Um, and the first few issues were like, like, you know, sixteen-page newsprint. You know, uh, blah, uh, not very good. <laughs> and those were um, your 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 photographs. Am I right? Well, I, or I, some I don't of think them? I have any in the first one or two, but then in the four, four and five, I have my my celebrity sheet column. And first, Lex was giving them photos, and I gave them, and then I wanted a sort of an exclusive. Yes. Uh, and they could, then for some issues, I was the chief photographer. One issue I did, oh, I did a whole bunch of fashion spreads for them and covers. So, mm-hmm. Bathing Beauties with the designer Kathy McKinnon on the cover, and Nick Nasty, the club kid on the cover. And, oh, and, 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 and oh my God, the first glossy cover was black and white. It was two photos. My photo of Rudolph and Diane Brill representing downtown royalty mm, okay. and then 
the other photo mm-hmm. was Donald and Ivana Trump. And they're, and I, I, I put this <laughs> as a uh, twist in. They're uptown trash. Oh, pretty, yeah. Uptown yeah. trash, downtown. Uh, Jim St. James did the call, uh, did the article called Uptown and Downtown with my photos comparing, you know, Scavulo, John Simone, Need We Seen Say More, Michael Alec, Cornelia Guest, uh, James St. James, and Baroness Gigi de Grand Pre, because they had the same curly wigs, you know, like silly stuff. But it was fun. Okay. And then, um, what am I saying? And I only did, yeah, I didn't, it wasn't yeah. like I needed to do more stardom columns or I didn't bother to do our, our, our celebrity sheet columns. But I never, I did a fashion spread, a couple of fashion spreads and whatnot. But see, I was lucky to get a hundred, a hundred bucks out of Michael. And I sh- never realized the value of my work. Mm-hmm. When, Meaning when like, are you do, I'm doing speak. this for you. This is worth X amount of dollars. See, I was, I would take with anyone because you, you, you know, you would rather have my fo- I'd rather have my photos in the magazine than see somebody else's photos in there. Well, that shows um, that so, you love so the so, the art. Yeah, of, the, yeah, there's a, yeah. Sorry. But it, it 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 shows that you love the art of taking yeah, photographs. Thank you. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I wasn't going out every, oh, not every night, but I wasn't going out, you know, for how many nights a week. Uh, for my work not to be shown mm-hmm. or not to be seen, and but of course, mm-hmm. uh, we you know here we are thirty uh, on average thirty two years yeah. later, and I'm only now getting around to. <laughs> I do, I do understand that. Yeah, I do understand that feeling of of, but the love of your work. Because f- for me personally, um, no, no relationship, no person can make me happy. Um, only my, only my work. You know, but my filmmaking, everything I do, that, but that is the one, um, w- one of the things that makes uh, makes me personally happy, and. And I satisfy in life to just, um, you know, cre- uh, cre- create projects, you know. And I do, yeah, I do understand yeah. I mean, that. At friendly. the time, I didn't realize I was in the middle of a project. I guess you call it documenting <laughs> New York. Uh, I, I think a, 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 what we call a changing of the guard. Um, they would always do these big group photos. They never asked me to do one, <laughs> but it was like the changing of the guard. All the new kids on the scene, and this is something that was first you. Cre- done in, 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 in Details Magazine, I think. Uh, with, like, you know, Warhol and Keith Haring and Bass get, like, a photo of all the new artists, so changing of the guard. And that goes back to earlier Warhol, meaning, like, in the 70s, there could be these big group photos of studio. all of the, uh, all the hanger-ons and whatnot. Yeah, um, at, at his studio. But, um yeah, um, and I think probably, yeah, they probably did big shots like that. I mean, you know, Abaddon did shots like that, you know, where just, mm-hmm. they're all like a tableau of all of the yeah. people as part of that, uh, uh, the elite of that scene. Um, the other thing is, I don't think I would have liked uh, um, continuing the scene in New York in the 90s because it got grungy and, and ta- I mean, it, it was cheesy in the 80s, you know, like club kid cheesiness, mm. dressing up in diapers oh. and stuff, but that was sort of like cute. Um, any dark stuff that came later, um, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have wanted to Whoa. document that, I don't think. And you know something? How yeah. many photos do you see in the 90s mm. of that scene anyway? No, Not yeah. much. Yeah. Well, I do, I do appreciate um, a a person that's that that know what they um like and and know what they don't like to do, so you, you know. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I mean to be honest with you, I mean, uh, nobody wanted these photos, these club kid photos. Nobody. These were uh, uh, uh related to this the title of this novel, which was the first party I did for Michael Alleg. Fabulous nobodies. Yeah, these were fabulous. <laughs> Nobody. So, um, unless that's the subject of your article, <laughs> is it in quotation? Um, nobody else needs these photos. Yeah. So, so John, <laughs> let's please talk. Um, let's talk about um Derek Ming. I believe that's his last name. Um, and I believe um as you as you said um he he was your um um, um prodigy. Oh, Derek Ming. Derek Ming. <laughs> 
what did I say about Derek Mean and when um, did I say it? Oh, you saw it on the video. video. Yes, 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 John. Yeah. Oh. I'm taking notes. I'm so, I'm taking notes. I'm doing my homework. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing well, my homework. See, it was, it's sad because yeah. he had attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, thicker than mud, okay? And that's great. You know, and he, he, you know, he was the beloved. I don't want to, you know, puncture holes in his, in his, you know, in his glory. But he was a beloved doorman. But I think he was a bit of a phony because you don't do what you do to me, do you hear what he did to me, and not be a fucking phony. I haven't heard, but what did he do to you? Well, it's like, it's so tacky, mm -hmm. and the, the, the greatest irony of this story is that then he became the greatest doorman. I still have, I, I, I mean, I only went to New York a few times for a show here in 97, and, da, 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 and I got a copy of Homo Extra, with him on the cover. I have that somewhere here. Uh, beautiful photo of him. You know, Derek Mean and the door, door, you know, they got a lot of call the door man, door people of New York, whatever. So this is the story. So I, I, I told you, I just done 8,000 scans. When I yeah. did the 4,000 scans last year and two years ago, I did not go out of my way to scan photos of him. Um, okay. And a few other people I really, you know, had whatever. But now this time I did. I've, and I got, let me just check right now, because I've named most of the photos. Oh, some of the photos are him with other people, and he wouldn't be named, blah, blah, blah. But let me check. So, 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 when so, he cut me out, when I, he, when he, yeah. what? No, no, because I, 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 I didn't know much about um, 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 Derek. It's a funny story. It's a good, it's a good story. So, tell me, story. tell me, please. Yeah. Okay, so let me go to the, what, my, my, okay, names, my names. I got four. 
to call up people to say, oh, I'll put your name on the list, and you do that every week, and then the one week you decide not to do it and not even have a guest list, and you're on stage in the middle of a, of a performer or performance, and the door people come and, and drag you off the stage to deal with an issue on the freaking door. Mm-hmm. All caused by Derek Mean. Okay. And usually it was Leslie, the Filipino uh, uh, fashion industry person, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, and all of her men, her black men, okay? Mm-hmm. And... And Derek Mean is like, looking at me like, what are you going to do about it? What, this is this, this despicable. Like, I couldn't get him into the club because, sorry, honey, you're just giving all the doorman attitude. You get John Sanani, you know, that typical asshole New York nightlife, you know, yeah. pushy purse, whatever. You know, it's like the thing, it's not even as funny as the has been line of Michael Musto. You know that famous line? No, no. Don't you know who I used to be? Oh yeah, I heard that. Yes, yes, I heard. I heard that. Yes, yes. <laughs> I repeat that. Well, all less, time. less, yeah, less. Yeah. In- so, yes, so, go ahead. So Derek Mean yes. is demanding, you know, uh, special treatment with in giving attitude. And sorry, once you give doorman attitude, fuck you. So he you know, he just, he was he was um did, are you saying he was a doorman? No, no, he was. Tra- he gave my doorman a- attitude. attitude. Okay, you know, and then he so was working he, behind the bar at one point. No, 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 no. He was no, no. He was just coming to my talent contest. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, and that one night I didn't have anybody's name on the list. I mean, again. This before computers, when mm-hmm. you could just have a, let's say, a permanent list printed out or printed out every week. You know, you had to hand, you know, you had to type it up or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. It's all rigmarole. Rigmarole yeah. when you're got yeah. a, uh, hosting celebrity judges and making sure your talent shows up for your, you know, if your no talent shows up, you have no talent contest. Yeah. So I don't need this bullshit from somebody that I was introducing to the scene. And it's, I, you know, here, you know, I'm the one that became the has been, you know, once the second you leave New York, as the famous Penny Arc, the famous line from Penny Arcade is, you be famous in New York, and the second you step out in New York, you're nobody again, which is okay. perfectly, uh, uh, evident to so many people who you know you're not part of the scene. Okay. You're gone. And and you know? what did and, and do you do you know what did on on Derek do like for like for a living like like what what was his job besides going to nightlife? Well, like Derek Mean's job. Yeah. Well, I don't know what he did. He, he, you know, uh, 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 for all I know, he was living off his 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 royalties. He was in the first Walkman commercial or some sort of bullshit. Okay, so let's so let's so let's end close with 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 this. The uh, lastly about on 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 Derek Ming. So sadly, he I uh, he passed away. How did he pass? Well, he, he committed suicide. Is what I heard. He was I, 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 he was deported back to Vancouver. I didn't I don't even remember that he was also Canadian. And there's another crazy thing that you would think you would you know have some sense of humor and your compatriot and like, you know, don't give attitude, especially to Dorn. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, so, you know, I saw something he did, uh, you know, and again, it was, I, I was, you know, flattering that he was phony. He was just Frankie Knuckles. And, and he was like talking like, oh, you know, Frankie, like talking like, oh, we were such insiders. Oh, fuck off. You know, like, uh, like smarmy, a little bit smarmy. And sure, I'm sure he went through, you know, what, how many years? I don't know, 10 years, 15 years mm-hmm. of fabulousness. You know, he should have gotten his immigration wow. papers in order or something. I don't know, it's sad. Long time, it's, uh, 10 years. Yes, yes, yes. And um, yeah. So, so, so let's, so let's, the thing is, yeah. So, sure. so, so here, and it's, again, it's sad. So here I, I spent months and months and months. So this is 1989, May, at least about five months, five, six months, you know, smoothing him around town. And 
So what he called after when I get home that night, or maybe it was the next day. He said he says to me, and that's when he said that was despicable. And so yeah, oh, oh my treatment has changed. So that's mm-hmm. the, you know blah blah blah. So then 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 the irony here's another irony. So here I was used to be the king of the VIP lounge, <laughs> ironic of the tunnel of the of the 1018 where I would one night I must have sold a hundred pictures up there when it was a champ uh, a Chris Dell champagne private party blah 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 birthday party yeah. and, and then he he gets a job as the as the doorman of the VIP lounge of the Roxy on Saturday night and he then tried to not let me up to the I mean Derek, go fuck yourself mm. Derek me. You know, like that. Oh, you, you, you know. Oh, you know, because you know when, when, you know when you've done something wrong, and you try to project that it's not your fault. It's the other thing. Is 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 gaslighting? I guess. Oh, it is. Well, no, it's just that you know. Uh, sorry, I'm still I'm still somebody in the scene okay. that's out here every night. You know, uh, uh, documenting it for whatever purpose, mm. and it's just like the whole. Charity thing, you know, like mm-hmm. sorry, I can't, I can't, I don't can't afford to pay a charity cover charge when I'm paying for taxis and film yeah. and developing and custom prints. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, uh, you know, and I'm funny, mm-hmm. I, I was never a fashionista. Who could? <laughs> okay. Um. Well. Yeah, well. Well. Yeah. With, with, no yeah but, with all that. Um, obviously, at the end of the day, you, uh, you and I, you know, f- um, I feel terrible, of course, that on um, on Der- uh, Derek uh commit suicide. Of course, that you that you feel, um, sadly about that and bad. So let's just move on. Um, I would I would like to talk about um, um, club uh ten eighteen now, again from reading from your um from your website, there was a lot of things going going on there at ten eighteen club. Um, there was, um, uh, gang members, people who were stabbed, um, shootouts, and a lot, a lot of they, stuff they, yeah, was they, going they, on. They, they, it closed down, it closed down, it must have closed down before New Year's Eve 1988, because I didn't work New Year's Eve 1988 and making five, selling 500 totals, um, because on Christmas night 88, and that's on my website. I guess it's Latoya Jackson did an all ages concert, and it was probably Gene Danino you know, himself who bl- could be blamed. Blamed. He could blame himself because I guess the arrangement with these clubs, the promoter gets the door, and they pay for the performer. I guess and blah blah blah. And I think the story was that Gene was letting other people in at the way at the back door. Uh, and there was no what's it called metal detector wow. and these junior gangsters because the real gangsters <laughs> with the gold and the Gucci mm-hmm. uh, leather jumpsuit um, they're not going to they're not going to they're in business in their own backyard yeah. yeah this is their regular Wednesday Friday Saturday night and it got destroyed in one night oh because these junior gangsters come in with whether it was real guns or plastic you know nine yeah. millimeters yeah. is that what they're called so yeah so uh, are you dissing me and you're dissing her blah 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 and there was gunshots and stampedes and blood spurting out of somebody's head mm. and this is before I ever went through safety training <laughs> like when I worked on cruise ships, safety okay. training, okay. you do not panic, mm-hmm. but I panicked. Uh, I would too. I would too. Well, I mean, I wanted to get my camera, get, get my camera bag, and uh, the coat check friend, uh, Clark Render, who was a famous, he just died last year, Clark Render, a yeah. famous performer. Grab, um, grab and go. And I upset, I upset him, because I... Because then if my panic could trigger somebody else's panic, uh, I just didn't want to be, uh, end up, in, you know, dead on Christmas night. What would my mother say? <laughs> so okay. I panicked. Whatever. So, anyway, cause I, I, anyway then the club never reopened as 1018, and then they yeah. re, re, reinvented themselves as a dark again. And then he had another 15 years of, of, of making stupid money. So, I mean, it was crazy. When I think I'm, I'm like I'm going through these photos and my and my and my thinking of what I did. I think it's almost like uh, not preposterous, but um, 
oh, I, I don't know what else I could have done in New York, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, except for what I did. <laughs> uh, nothing else would have made sense, I don't think. Uh, like, a, uh, But the fact is that I was in this scene that was um, so New York. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, this is real New York. Uh, these kids from the Brooklyn Bronx, um, and it's cool. I think it's cool when I think of it because I was like uh, this sort of total antithesis. So, um, and I and, and I guess they must think that you know I must be not to say I'm fearless or anything, but uh, I wasn't. You know, on the streets I I had a lot of fear, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but not in the club. Yeah. Even though a couple of people times I was threatened. Okay. Um, one guy, one guy sucker slapped me. Oh, so I said, he was on a photo and he just looked at me and just sucker slapped me, like snapped my neck. He could have broken my neck. Uh, like, just, just, just don't no make reason. that's that's, that's just, dumb. Just, that's stupid. Well, stupid. I was like, he didn't like this faggot, this nerdy faggot, you know, uh, asking him to buy a picture. <laughs> yeah. And that sort of situations like that is sad, but that was that was like one out of uh, you know, twenty, thirty thousand interactions. Mm, um, but some, yeah, they, they, but that's how it is. is uh, um, people yeah. are not, they don't have a, a a wide view in about the world. They they only close in in they in their neighborhood, and people don't are, are not open minded. Um, at some no, points, okay. but how did you develop fo- your um, f- photographs? I landed to Richard in yeah. the penthouse at 90 Lexington, and I first started, I needed a place to develop black and white. I think I might have done one or two roles at my film store, which was Cam, at 28 and South Park Avenue South, Yossi Kamar, and, but, okay, I was at 27 in Lexington. I walked up the street. I don't know if I was actually looking for anything, or I saw it inadvertently, and it was... TLC in the window, a little like storefront. Tender, loving care, custom black and white developing. <laughs> I thought that couldn't be more convenient. Yeah. Uh, two blocks away from my home, and there's this lovely woman and her father, and they did all custom. The, the black and white prints I still have that I submitted to all the magazines, all these beautiful five by seven custom prints on fiberboard paper and they're just uh, mini artworks because it was custom. It wasn't a machine print. So that was brilliant. I have, oh, okay, my film is dying, so let me get to my other phone. No problem. Okay. That was the first beep, first beep on the handset. <laughs> all right. Yeah, my, I, let me see. Okay. I got okay. 73% on my phone. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, good, okay. Um, so, yeah, I um, they developed my ro- rolls of film, the contact sheets, and I did all my printing. And although when I lived, uh, ironically, well, well, not all of it, because when I, uh, I think they did all my prints. But not my, all my developing, because when I moved to 46th Street and 3rd Avenue, I got my own place in 88, uh... On that street, literally on 40, 46th Street, I said 46, 46, it was the dark room, which yeah. was, I think it's still there, a custom mm, uh, photo yeah. lab. Okay. Uh, big, big, not like a mom and, like a, you know, father and daughter, but a big, big, big establishment. So they were like, again, right on my block, which it was sort of a lot of serendipity. I mean, if I hadn't gone into 1018 that day, I would I've ended up maybe not getting into any club. I don't know. Okay. Because um, one thing always leads to another. Um, of course. And New York is a is a, effect. It's really was brilliant uh, yeah. for people opening doors for you. Um, they didn't, you know, the I think they respected your your eagerness and your your um, you know your your new in town. So you know you you know, uh, you know they invite me to places and whatnot. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was uh, Howie Montag and Anita and and other and Michael Alec and other promoters like that um, because they're not idiots. It's like okay, I'm I'm declaring myself as a scene photographer. I'm um, 
I'm a, what's the word, a functionary of the scene now, meaning like the scene works by, you know, somebody's got to d- dish out the drinks and somebody's got to promote the parties and somebody's got to photograph the parties. You're a one-man band. <laughs> Well, no, and then I was on it, but I did. Um, and, not, and, and, and yeah, we could uh, talk about Patrick Mullen. <laughs> I was his nemesis. But, you know, he was still, you know, he was an established man. Um, who was Patrick? But, uh, who, uh, what, who, what? Who, was, who, was, who was Patrick? Uh, yeah, nobody knows who he is. Okay. But he was the one who was the original <laughs> one from detail. Well, he's all those other photographers. But when, see, mm. um... I didn't have contacts at New York Magazine. I published one photo in interview, but when interview wanted a new photo page, they just handed it to Patrick. The New York Magazine wanted a photo page, they just handed it to Patrick. And when another, and even Vanity Fair, they just handed it to him because he had more access going to the more private dinners and bullshit like that. You know, the real celebrity stuff, which is not yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Tell me, how did you meet um, Suzanne Barcher? Patrick, yeah. Patrick Buckley uh, took me to that party at the tunnel. I met these journalists. I met this legendary fashion icon, or at least he became one, in the pages of uh, Bill Cunningham in the New York Times. I saved an article... I was getting the New York Times of him, of, of one of those, uh, of, it was at least four photos of this guy. And he was famous for all black and white, or all color patterns. So black and white polka dots, black and white stripes, black and white, all in the same outfit. And he had racks of these clothes. He lived on, where the, uh, something place, one of those places, Deep Beekman Place or something. But anyway, his name was Shale, S-H-A-I-L, Upadja, A U. P-A-D Pupadia Y-A and he was a diplomat for uh, Nepal and he was at this party and I photographed him and he said I'm starting a magazine and I you know and this proves my this just illustrates my story my point the first party I went to I'm carrying a camera and some guy is offering me a job to shoot for this new magazine. <laughs> mm. And it never happened. And he and uh, he was calling it an eye of the apple. And then when I saw Patrick uh, Stephen Saban at Suzanne Barsha's first or second week, and I said, I'm doing this for this guy, which again, never happened. He said, well, come down to details and show me your contact sheets. Because I had some contact sheets with me. Like I was carrying them around. That's how eager I was, to, I guess, I guess, I guess to just let people know I'm doing this and that's you know would open the door there but then I would see Shell around and whatnot but he never got this magazine sorry but if I had oh this is thing oh wait so then I using him uh, that angle as an impetus to call people and say oh I'm working for this new magazine uh, can I come and cover your party I don't know how many people I actually called even before I worked uh, where Stephen introduced me or uh, invited me down. But so Suzanne Barsh was happening at the same time. Okay, here it was. So, and it's also at the same time, um, this is all like in August 87. Uh, Stanley Burke, who the late promoter, in house promoter of 1018, was trying to do uh, a sort of a, a, a VIP entrance on, on 19th Street. It was the, 1019 at 1018, blah, blah, blah. So he had, he gave me a slideshow, a pot shot of photos or whatnot, uh, photos by John Spani. So I was promoting it. I had to go take photos. I had to go take okay. shots. Yeah. So I went and did all these color slides, and I think they, they have, God knows where they ended up. They, they kept them. But, and then that same week, I guess Howie or somebody told me that Suzanne Barsh is doing a party, and I only have one little quick little shot of her from that night um looking at me from behind her shoulder but then the next week with the shots that uh that they were published in details um and i think that maybe the week that uh, faye dunaway showed up and i published that photo in details and in the new york post uh, and the photo other photo in new york post was patrick mcmullen with howie montag and chi chi valenti from the houses uh, Jackie 60 um, at Savage so it was like everything all happened within weeks like uh, my name's in New York Post my name then became in D- Details Magazine and 
Um, so Suzanne Bush, I started basically the same week she did. Okay. And and I just counted the new photos I did yeah. of her. I must be already 70 or 80, but I now have another 140. Did you ever take I photos did. at the at the drag ball? Or the, or the, I didn't do any, I, which was like, like all the things I regret not doing, thinking like it wasn't maybe my scene or uh, who would want to buy the photos? Because again, Stephen Sullivan didn't want, uh, and it's like, and also I was slowly um, burning out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was doing Polaroids, I was doing acting class Polaroids and nightlife in 87 and early 88. And then I was doing Polaroids and nightlife. And then I was doing nightlife and promotions. And in that last year and a half, I did like 100, 100 nights of promotions. Okay, so at, at the MK um, club gig. Okay, so at the balls. So at the balls. So wait, I only did yeah. the love ball, obviously, Suzanne Barsh's love ball. Yes, yes. Yeah, which I you know published lots of photos and, and details and, and, and project X. And I've got to scan practically every photo I did that night, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photos from that night. That are going to be in my archive. Okay, so um, this is one of the artists that I really admire, um, and that is Lee Lee Bowery. Um, tell me about uh, about taking about him. Well, about again, Lee Bowery was the you know I, I describe him as the the patron saint of the club kids. Uh, a, a, they inspired them. He inspired them. They, they uh, and, and their own creativity and imagination yeah. and outfits. So, yeah. And the first photo I did of them was published in Stephen's column. Says Stephen Stephen's column, uh, coming down the hall, long entrance hallway, which is really dramatic um, of uh, Suzanne Barsh's Savage, because she uh, was the first, I guess, the designer, or the the retailer brought all of these British designers over. I think she was in London before she came to New York for many years, so she knew them all. And so when she had her Suzanne Barsh store, she brought these London, what you call catwalk shows, and, and then she would sell the stuff. So, and all the, I remember seeing Lee Bowery in, in, in the ID magazine and the Face magazine, and probably in earlier, de- maybe in earlier details magazines, I'm not sure. Okay. And so, I, I mean, I, he had the light bulbs on his head. Is with his wife, um, Nicola Clayton, and and I went. I don't know what who that is. I don't know if I actually knew who that was. Yeah. yeah. Or or I I heard his thing. Then obviously somebody told me who it was, or he told me, and and I got lots of photos that night. And then every time uh, Suzanne opened the, the Bentleys, uh, many months later, or for Wednesday nights, and then the Copa uh, the last Thursday every month, she, he was always. At the openings, mm. and then all my, my photos all would yeah. almost always end up in detail. There was nothing else like Lee Bowery. Of course not. And, yeah. and when I when I showed my, uh, I had a booth at the first New York Drag Con in 2017. Um, he, I mean, I said I'm being negative here. Um, if everyone is fabulous, no one is fabulous. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like mm. back then. Everyone were maybe cool fashion industry people. They're all in black, or they're sort of nice you know, tailored outfits. But then mm-hmm. there's Lee Bowery in you know in yellow caribou feather dress or whatever it was, and light bulbs on his head. So so you know, yeah, and, not the norm. And it's like I, I this is this is uh, otherworldly. Um, it's it's uh, taking reality, you know, or pushing reality. Whereas when I saw at DragCon. Dozens and dozens and dozens of people with that full body fabric head cover look. Well, okay, but it's been done before. Yeah, it's like you know, and 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 I'm too egomaniacal or vain to want to cover my head up anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, so, so I look at that and think, what are you presenting? It's like I'm yeah. thinking, you're this. You got this. You know, how many hours? Hundreds of hours did you put in that outfit? But who cares? Because every other person is some fabulously crazy he outfit. Was, so, so he's so, a great performance again, artist. Glad, sorry, what? He was a great um, performance artist. That, that, that's was, for sure. Was, so he was just a, a posing or strutting. Yeah, he also did all of his minty. You know, minty. 
No, I don't, look I don't up think Minty, so. Look up Minty, okay. M-I-N-T-Y, on YouTube. All these videos he did, it was an, a, a band, I guess he was in, and it was I think crazy, so. crazy. Yeah, th- crazy, yeah, he, crazy. he did like a video, like a... Um, he went to the mall. Yeah, he went to a mall. He did like a like a video shoot. So John, um, obviously when you met Lee Bowery, um, he was he was well known, but th- uh, there was one person that wasn't a mainstream or w- well known. You knew a RuPaul before he was famous, um, and tell me, how did you meet Ru- a RuPaul? Look again, uh, Michael. You can see one of Nelson's video of Michael Alec at Nelson and RuPaul and Larry T's home with another the Fort Gansworth Gallery where I had the show last year. Yeah. And um, and he just met Larry T. Okay, we're going to give you a night at the tunnel. And, oh, maybe, I, maybe, I think they even talk about the name, Celebrity Club. Okay, I think you may have done the Celebrity Club in Atlanta. And, and the, I think the first photo I have of Larry T and La Homa and Ru- no, no, not La Homa. Larry T, RuPaul, and Nelson. And it's, a, you know, not the greatest shot in color, color slight. And in the tunnel basement, and maybe when they were like checking it out and uh, whatever. And I guess I, then I covered the celebrity club every Wednesday. I used to be up and they made me the celebrity of the week on my birthday, June 29th, 1988. Okay. And so that's okay. so so but it's a loophole. Uh, <laughs> what my when I look when I look at my what I actually have yes. done, I see okay. Once I knew who you are and your name, your name in my head, and your what I call presenting, and you're a drag queen, and you're ready to pose and strut. Well, you're my, I'm going to photograph you every time I see you. I wish I obviously did more and more of her every time I saw her. Because sometimes, I think I had an attitude like I don't want to impose on you, ironically, because that's what you have to do. you got to, you, you know, know, interrupt yeah. people's, you know, moment and whatever. But, and you'd only do maybe one shot. And when you wish you did a lot more of everybody when you think of it back when when you look mm-hmm. back but so yeah she was just once she was established in my mind as uh, one of the top people I need to photograph every time okay. then that was that was the case um, like Michael there's Michael Michael Musto Julie Jules Michael Tron uh, James Lady Bunny uh, Goldilocks I mean all the ones that have their own pages on my website yeah not as part of the my photo cyclopedia A to Z. Uh, no, I mean, those are the people like Perfidia and, and International Crisis. Um, these are the ones that are the most colorful, the most creative, the most uh, original. Um, I, I was trying to say earlier, when I came back to Toronto in 1990, late 1990, the drag scene was like every other city in the world. Lame, dreary, tacky, all big padded shoulders, sequined. Everybody thought they were living the dynasty. Remember Dynasty? The worst show, the tackiest show, and they were like, that's what they were were emulating. Uh Whereas the New York Queens were emulating John Waters movies, black exploitation movies, Uh uh, something that was satirical or ironical or, or a thousand times more interesting than the fucking dynasty. <laughs> I mean, this is okay, so. I mean, I mean, I'm not very gay because most things in the gay world are so, are, you might as well just be a tacky, heterosexual, mainstream idiot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I hate, I hate mainstream, hate conformity. Anyway. <laughs> well, um, okay, so, so lastly about, about RuPaul. So, as every everyone knows, uh, RuPaul 
once had worked as a, a go-go dancer. Am I right? Yep. Okay. So, um, do you... And I have the photos. Uh, in the Suzanne Barsh documentary, Suzanne Barsh on top. Yeah. Uh, RuPaul is featured heavily, and she, he actually was, I think, the executive producer of it. Um, okay. I don't know if it's still on Netflix, but anyway. Um, I have seen says, that documentary. Yes, yeah, I have. I have. I saw that. I saw that documentary. Yes. Yeah. So, so Suzanne Bar. He says Suzanne Barsh gave me my first uh, job as a go-go dancer, and and. Look at my website, and you'll see her on the Google box at yeah. Savage and at the opening night of Bentley's. Okay. Um, so, so let's yeah, so let's. Yeah, um, you know who Armin Ra is? Uh, no, no, no. Um, Armin Ra is this little cute little uh, black-haired Egyptian original club kid. He discovered mm. Amanda Lepore. He has a documentary, an award-winning documentary. Uh, what's the name of it? He became a theremin player, a theremin master uh, uh, genius. You know what theremin is? Uh, no, 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 I don't. It's an it's a, it's a invisible electronic uh, musical instrument. Well, I would, I, I've there, I would definitely um, search, uh, uh, search him up. And w and what's his name again? Armin Ra, A R A R M E N R A, and uh, documentary. And anyway, what am I saying? Um, a Ru RuPaul. Uh, uh, yeah, weird sound effects in, in, in horror movies. Like, it's it's done on a theremin, and you can play music with it. Anyway, blah blah blah. Okay. And so he told me. So I have a photo of him with Perfidian Taboo um, from probably the opening night of, of Copa, all go-go dancing. So he was short. Okay. And RuPaul was tall. So Suzanne Barsh played her go-go dancers by the foot. Uh, may probably I don't know him by by name, but most likely yeah, if, if I see a photo photo yeah, of yeah, him, yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, he's all he's all in the from the so, early the nineties too. Okay, so I tell you that's a yes. joke. It's like, so so because Rupert was <laughs> tall, he got paid more than Armin Ra because he was short. Okay, I got okay, okay. Don't know. Hey, may, hey, maybe the the joke um passed by me. So so yeah. So let okay. So let's skip forward. Um. Uh. And you. Uh, work for uh, you went to work for the Princess Cruises ship for five years, and how we, as a, as a senior uh, a senior photographer teacher. Now, how was that? How was that experience being in in a ship? Well, I'm glad I did it before Corona hit. That's for sure. Um, we, uh, it was. Uh, it was sort of a dream job. Um, I've always wanted to see the world and I never had the opportunity and uh, so I, when I got the job when they hired me um, and they usually hire like people in their 20s I was 42 but I had 20 years of you know photojournalism mm -hmm. but whatever anyway um, after they hired me I had this flashback thinking oh my god John this was your dream job when you were maybe 14 because the actor Ted McGinley was started doing a character on the love boat, which is Princess Cruises, as Ace, the photographer. And I became, and I, I figured, oh my God, I, I thought I could do that job. I'd like to do that job. Yeah, and so, job. You know, like, and, you know, and I was like, oh my God. And so anyway, so that was interesting. And it was hard. In a sense, it's the easiest job on the ship, but it's also, you know, tedious. You're staying on the gangway for four hours. A lot of, you're putting a thousand percent energy in. And the gangways and portrait nights, you're shooting portraits for, for six hours. And, uh, but then, uh, you know, great people you meet. And I went on hundreds of land tours. Um, and so I got to photograph the world. Um, well, that work is all on my Jet Set Johnny yeah. CA site. Um, which are links on all every web page I have has, has links to all that stuff. Which was sort of uh, how do you say uh, the opposite of New York nightlife? Uh, lots of sunlight, 
Um, I never photographed. I never photographed New York, except for in nightclubs. Okay. All right. Um, it is weird, uh, weird. You know, I guess missed off. But again, like I was doing all these other things. Who can do everything, right? But anyway, for Princess was great in a sense, great. But also, um, you know, yeah. it destroyed my knees. You travel <laughs> for this. You, you, you travel um, for in uh, a few places or around the world, two times, back to back. That's that's a lot. Well, I don't know how many times. So when you're doing an itinerary. And you're doing the itinerary 17 times, so in that one six months, you probably traveled around the world three or four times, maybe. Of course, of course. Or something like that, effect. I don't know, maybe just two times. <laughs> there was a gallery show called The Last Party, The Night World in Photographs. Okay. And it was 1997, uh, the opening show at the Sayers Scirocco Gallery on West Hall, West Broadway. It doesn't exist anymore, but I think it still exists in San Francisco where it first started. And uh, it was inspired by Anthony Hayden Guest's <coughs> uh, yeah. history of nightlife called uh, The Last Party, Studio 54 Disco and Culture of the Night. And the last chapter was the Michael Alec, you know, story. And I would not have been part of that. It was a gallery show inspired by the book, and it it covered a hundred years of nightlife. We have um, Andre Cortez's famous, you know, cabaret shots from Paris in the 30s, mm. and Suda 54, and uh, uh, Tropez, Saint Tropez, and then all my photos. And so Andy Warhol, and Avedon, and Diane yes. Arbus, and Ouija. And um, out of 250 photos, 37 were f- from my archive. And, and I wouldn't have even been in this show if. It's in my, I have fabulous art uh, uh, studio loft in Parkdale, New York, Toronto. Okay. And I was I never want, I never turn on Geraldo's show in the afternoon. Yeah. This is 1997, and I said, oh, I wonder what's on the Geraldo show. And I always think it was like my late friend saying, John, turn on the Geraldo show. So I turn on the Geraldo show, and there's Michael Masto screaming Rachel, Rachel Kane. Anthony Hayden Guest all talking about Michael Alec and that the whole story. And 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 they say that there's going to be this book coming out. So I get him on the phone right away and he said, Oh well it's too late to put photos in the book. That's one of the problems when you've left New York, you don't know what the hell's going on. And but they're doing a gallery show. So here's the, you know, call the curator. So I did, and I sent her a couple hundred proofs, and that was cool. Um, okay, okay. So- yeah, and then it, it also play. it also then they, they traveled to the original Sir Struckle show, uh, gallery in San Francisco, and unfortunately, they, they talked that it was going to go to uh, Japan and, and uh, okay. Moscow, but to some uh, art museums, but that never happened. Oh, okay, John, but we are almost close, just, uh, I mean, I mean, we are almost um, done with, with, with the question. Okay. Questions, but um, it's a few questions. Um, in nineteen, okay, so nineteen ninety eight, you had a uh, exhibit, uh, sixty nine slides in that, and that exhibit, um, was named um New York Miller M- M- Miller Horse. Miller Horse. Yeah. yeah. So this again, this is like uh, so it was the the exhibit at the Art Gallery of Ontario, which has just been re done with an addition by Frank Gehry, the famous architect. He, he was born around the corner in Toronto. Anyway, and it was the Warhol look. The fashion, fashion, something, something, something. It, it was like his, his fragile dresses and his cow wallpaper and um, his fashion illustrations for shoe stores and and it was this you know opening party and Grace Jones performed so it was very Warholian okay. and yeah. but very tacky because the the, the, <laughs> from, uh, the hosts of the show the sponsors of course mm-hmm. everybody was wearing a Warhol wig which can't be any more tackier than that right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyway so I did a show uh, in the Walker Court oh. while where Grace Jones performed. Uh-huh. The 
massive slide screens, and one was, the two were all Warhol illustrations and shoe drawings and stuff like that, and cherubs and stuff. And, and at my slide show, New York media horrors. Yeah. So some Warholians and celebrities and no club kids, which is stupid, uh, no club kids or none of the colorful, like, like Michael Alec and, and that whole club scene. That was like a new war, new Warholian set. The, the, you know, all Warhol was were the original club kids, you know what I mean, in the 60s. But, yeah. um, so, so that was like the third show I did with Warhol. <laughs> the one wow. at the... So Chiraco Gallery, and this, this is a jokey, jokey one. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I'll tell, go back to the Grace Jones in a second. The <laughs> 1987, so I'm just starting, yeah. and Why? Yeah. and uh, I had just published this photo in the second issue of the Deep Dove I was in of Nancy Zipkin. And the photo I got of her was at Suzanne Barsh's Sauvage, and she was pulling out one of her huge breasts and this guy named Lewis was like got his head in it and said and Stephen Saban published it and it, not huge he just sort of published it big that would have been tacky and Lewis Wall picture saying music loses the savage breast so that photo okay and then she told me her name Nancy Zipkin and I said oh you're related to Jerome Zipkin he said yeah he's like my uncle but you know Americans are so stupid, eh? <laughs> hey, yeah. I could have been a third cousin or this or that. But he was a famous guy. And that's another, I'll tell you about Okay, well, 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 so, so, yeah, so John. So, 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 so yeah. Stephen Saban comes with, oh, Jerome Zipkin's feast. And then when I was showing my photos of Faye uh, Dunaway to the New York Post and Richard Johnson of Page Six fame, he, he published this, he printed a photo, uh, he, he published my photo of, Another photo of Nancy Zipkin saying, be, uh, be on the lookout for this woman. She's not who she claims to be. She claims to be the, the niece of uh, Jerome Zipkin, uh, Nancy Reagan's confidant, and blah, blah. And he was a big, famous fag walker. I have photos of him with Ivana Trump. Mm. You know, when, when mm. Donald was whoring with the top porn stars, you know, somebody has to escort her to this event. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So the show I did, it was in the Blind Lights ch- Chapel, and I called it East Village oh. Venus. Oh, it was like 12, 15 photos oh. of Nancy Zipkin, and on the other wall, Bear Jones, the original downtown promoter, showed his original Warhols, and he came up to me, and he said... You see that painting? That's a Warhol. <laughs> so that was the first thing Whoa, I did with yeah. Warhol. <laughs> oh my All God. Silly, silly, cheesy. See, my, everything I did was cheesy. No, sense. but it makes sense. It makes sense. No, Definitely. It, it, it makes sense. It makes yeah, sense. Cheesy. Why do I so cheesy? Because here was, I was with Michael Alex. It's a wordplay. The, 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 the cheesy. Yeah. The cheesy Warhol. And I... Moved to New York to meet Warhol, mm-hmm. okay. and it was probably just as well that he died a week before I moved, uh, March one, mm-hmm. because it was the changing of the guard, uh, yes. meaning yeah. uh, uh, I, the second know, coming. It was, it was, the new scene, I didn't know a new scene was starting. Yeah. Like it said, six six months later, I'd be part of it. Uh, Suzanne Barsh was a new scene, and and uh, Michael Alec, and then uh, at the same time, Suzanne Barsh was doing her Tuesday nights. Dean Johnson was doing the Rock and Roll Fag Bar at the at the World. So we would go to Savage, and then maybe go down to the uh, East Villas, and you know, uh, yeah. you see later. Um, do you know do you know who Dean Johnson is? Oh my god, I feel, I feel so bad now. <laughs> I don't know these website. names. <laughs> Look on my website under D, under the D. Dean Johnson. Dean Johnson. Is it, uh, he's the yeah, one. but uh, it, did he had uh, like a, a shave head? No? So, so, yeah, he a bald head? head. He yes, I, I know him. Yes, I know of him. Yeah, yeah. So he was like six foot six bald. Yes, uh, yes. I know, I know, yes. I know of him. So go to YouTube and I have seen him. The, yeah, Dean I have Johnson seen his yeah. yeah, it's called "Fuck You." This the rap song "Fuck You." And I saw brilliant. that. I saw that performance. I think yeah, I, he was so performing. Yeah. 
Uh, one okay, of so, uh, uh, Nelson had videotaped him. I saw that. Video. Yeah, oh, oh, that's great. So a lot of that videotape is probably going to be in a new documentary on him okay. called called The Big Johnson. When and when is Lola this? Rock and Rolla, Lola Rock and Rolla is the director. And let me check my email. Let me check my email. Ooh, let's see. Oh, I got an email from the producer. Um, let me think. Thanks so much, Sean. We'll let you know shortly and place our order with you. This is Dale Zelich, and he contacted me a few weeks ago. Um, I contacted the director last year, but in the meantime, she directed like a live feature, this exploitation horror kind of chainsaw master kind of beach bikini movie <laughs> yeah and and so then this, she, he finally contacted me and I, I, it was perfect timing because i just spent three months scanning every photo i i had of dean because i knew this movie was perfect happening timing. and i was you know being yeah. i was being optimistic so i sent him my 75 photos and they just licensed 42 of my photos for that documentary. Congratulations. So that's that's Correct. good news. Good yeah. news. And he, now they just came back to me last night saying, um, they're probably going to interview, probably interview Jane County for the movie. And so they wanted photos of Jane, Jane County. So that's, uh, I, that's good. I can't wait to, and once it's oh, all yeah. complete, I can't wait to, um, to watch it. So uh, isn't it works now? Obviously. You, you haven't seen that. You haven't seen that trailer, have you? For mm. the Big Johnson? Mm. I don't believe no, I did. Because I think it's on a private link on okay. YouTube. Anyway, anyway, I'd seen it last year, or six months, or whatever, when she shared it. Yeah. And I, and I went, oh my God. <laughs> Amazing. I want my photos in this documentary. And the only negative I thought was, why would they want my photos if they have all this incredible, incredible video? But yeah. uh, thankfully they did. And not only that, I don't know what they, they said. Oh, thank you, John. Uh, uh, it's really going to help us tell our story. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the other 42 pictures, 20 of them were from one night mm -hmm. at the tunnel. He, he did a promotion. I don't know how many weeks. It didn't last months, but uh, he did with all the drag queens. Uh, he did Dean Johnson's School for Girls. So they had RuPaul, Taboo, La Homa, Perfidia, I think Bunny, and Miss Guy, and Miss Glamour, and doing like a whole choreographed production numbers. They did like hairspray with like with air, air freshener and fabulous. So I did all these a sequence of shots of them performing. They, they, they oh. licensed like twelve or thirteen or fourteen of uh, just that one performance, just that one night. Awesome. So, so I think they could make gifts, just gifts out of them because um, it's like you know like a, a stop motion, like a, like a or a flip book yeah, or yeah, yeah. action, and that's sort of how I probably was photographing it. Boom, 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 boom. So again. So that's Who's the so name? That's to me, that's exciting because what you do something thirty years ago. Yeah. So why is the name of this director again? Please, can you please tell me? It's again? called the Big Johnson. And the director, yeah. what what was the no, name? Lola, yeah. Lola Rock and Rolla, like Rock R O C K, I think N R O L L A, Rock and Rolla. Okay, John. So um, yeah. let's 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 move ahead. In two thousand four, you had the Flash. Um. And you had a gallery of official 58 uh, images. Now, go ahead. Please tell me. Yeah, that was at um, the Edward Day Gallery, which sadly doesn't exist anymore. And it was a group show. And it was um, a sort of a pride show. And uh, there was like four other photographers, Toronto photographers, and of their Toronto scene photographs um from you know there's, there's always been an active uh, interesting game of swinging club scene in new york in toronto i mean and so that was you know, it, it was a great you know one one good guy uh, we showed all these club polaroids and there was, anyway the lesbians and whatnot so yeah that was all my um uh, new york work and curated by my friend Kelly McRae, and 
but you know, <laughs> Toronto, you know, they, yeah. I don't know, they, 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 they think they're more, uh, I mean, it was a beautiful show, and then I sort of remounted it in 2014 and added another 20 um, smaller pictures <laughs> to make it like 75, and then I called it the legends, uh, the legends of New York nightlife, um, and that was part of at a gay theater uh, exhibition space called Buddies, mm-hmm. Buddies in Bad Times, uh, which is the big biggest public gay, gay theater company in the world, and and it was part of this. It was the first year in inaugural uh, festival called the Nui Rose. You've heard of Nui Blanc. No, no, no. Louis Blanc is White Knight. And I don't know where it started, uh, and they've done them all over the world. And they're one night public art installations, performances, happenings. And you're not gay. It's just like, you know, cities hosting it. We have a big one in Toronto. And so this was, instead of. Nui Blanc mm. night we did Nui Rose like a pink night and it was uh, the, uh, the first weekend of gay pride in Toronto and it again a big free opening a big festival of art and culture and performances so that was you know so it was appropriate uh, appropriate to do it that year and that uh, the third part of that festival um, so that mm. that show is you know it's a great show it's all uh, custom prints and uh, with additions and whatnot. uh Stored right here in my apartment. Okay. Um, okay, so we are getting, are getting very close um, uh, to the end of this interview. And uh, and I just want to um, talk about uh, Nelson Sutherland, who I personally admire and um, and respect his work. And, and I had um, a chance to go to um, the exhibit. Uh, I've got the name of it. I'm sorry. Um, it was um, at his oh, you his place. You saw the Nelson Sullivan. You saw, you saw the Nelson Sullivan show. Uh, and your yeah. photographs was 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 in 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 display there, um, too. And I had and the last day was on August 10th. Now I went there for my birthday. I would had I was so thankful. I had a chance to 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 go there. I, actually, it was my birthday, so. It was for me personally. I I really was thankful to um to be there. And so, John, you uh, how did you meet on on uh, Nelson? I think I said uh, that the first time I met him was at the tunnel when yeah. they were uh, either checking out the space, literally, like it was it was on the landing. The, the tunnel basement was a big staircase, a landing, and then a, another way going down. And it was taken there and. And that's what I, uh, on first shot, I think. And to, again, if someone's, for, you, you meet somebody, you meet somebody, you're instant friends in, in a sense, because yeah. you know, you're, it's acknowledged that he, they're doing something. He had his, I think he had his camera with it, his video camera. I'm taking his picture. So you, you, it's like, you don't have to warm up to anybody. You, know, you meet them, you've met them. I, I I like that quote. I like that. I'm I'm gonna quote you on that. I like that phrase. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I love that. Um. So, uh, uh, Nelson Sullivan from from what I know as a, as a viewer. Um. I obviously I wasn't um there at 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 that time. But um, uh, his last video was on July third, and his he passed away. For what I know of. Um, from a heart attack on July fourth, nineteen eighty nine. Nineteen eighty nine. Eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yeah. How did you react to that of his passing? I just I heard it. as in Stephen Lewis's office at the Red Zone. I think Larry T. told me, mm-hmm. and that was it's, it's, you know it was sad. He was he was uh, he was older than everybody else, but he was only forty. Um, I think, or maybe you know, he's forty-five. Um, you know, and again, you know, again, you know, it, you, you know, uh, somebody's uh, nice and friendly, and uh, it's 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 um, you don't expect you know people yeah. to be dying at that point, even though there was so much died death with the with the AIDS crisis. Do you know uh, what would happen to um, um, Blackout, his dog? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you know? Uh, I don't know things. I don't okay. know things like that. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, 
uh, and also, you know, like I was friends with everybody, but I wasn't like, um, I don't, you know, people weren't inviting me for dinner or anything. Like I was still like a, in a, in like a, uh, where, meaning like, you know, my job, I, I took it upon myself to just document the scene, but I, um, I didn't maybe need, have a need to like, oh, you know, smooth people to the point where, um, you know, I would be doing too much outside of the scene. That's, I guess, the point. I, I would only uh, saw these people, anybody from, you know, except for Rebecca Alec when I was doing stuff and, and articles and stuff. Mm -hmm. But generally, but again, there's the nightclub scene, and then there was the, how would you describe it? The, Media scene, and media, no, uh, Midtown, uh, publishing events, uh, crazy promotional parties, celebrity uh, gatherings, stuff that had nothing to do with nightclubs or club kids or drag queens. That's yeah. the other half of my archive. Um, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, like you know, tributes to Sidney Poitier. You very you know, di di and, and diverse in your in your work. Yeah, yeah, because I was I was I I was making a name for myself as photographer. Period. Not like a yeah, you're not pigeonholed in in one yeah. thing. I, I do understand that. I I, I hate it yeah. when people put me in one in one category, and they were like, "Oh my God!" But you do that? Like, yes, I, I do a lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to say, like, I dabbled in everything, but I, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I regret that I didn't go out every, to every one of these sort of cheesy, yeah. silly club kid parties, because uh, it, it, it doesn't matter what the party is for or about, I realize now what my... What I was doing was just, you know, making a record of these people, and basically, you know, they're fabulous. Nobody's in their outfits because that was it was all about going out and seeing people, showing off. I mean, um, expressing yourself. I mean, I joke yeah. about the club kids that they didn't wear the same outfit more than once. Wow. Because a lot of times they would go shopping at Goodwill. This is like Larry T and RuPaul and Michael Alec and Michael Musso. You can just imagine like the, the tackiest, I mean, the, the tackiest, gaudiest, you know, yeah. retro kind of outfits and their uh, shirts or sweaters or dresses. And it's great because they make a statement or whatever and then you don't, They'll never wear that again. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but it's um, from 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 the I, yeah. Yes. Go ahead. I say like I never dress. I mean, I wore a boat. I wore sport coats. I wore my leather jacket. I I had like a generic working uniform in a sense. It wasn't my job to dress up. Nobody ever photographed me. I photographed myself lots of times with uh, lots of people, yeah. but. Um, It wasn't, it was, it wasn't my job to be uh, a dress-up person. Okay, great. Um, I just want to say again, um, uh, John, I, I thank you so so much for the experience because um, I, I do in, in my YouTube for your works and as a filmmaker, um, and uh, I'm not a, photogra a photographer, but we are in the same field, so love, and And I and I do and I do respect your works and all the things that you you have done and I will leave, um, in the YouTube video and my website I will leave all all your information that you um can be contact, um your your website sure, you. and everything down there, okay. Okay. And, That's uh, great. Thank you so much, Richard. It's been fun. <laughs> it has been three. How long? How long we have, we have been speaking? Two hours. Two, two hours. hours. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. But all right, John. Have a, have a beautiful day. Okay. Stay safe. Okay. You too. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.